Jimmy Coco is Colucci of Colucci's department of the new CBS Channel 11 network show. My impression, and I get this merely from seeing you in some movies and some talk shows, including the first network talk show I ever saw you on, was that you're the kind of a guy that I would like to spend time with. We have a ball. You know why? Because everything happens to me. I'm prone to everything. I mean, if there's a first for anything, I'm it. For instance, have you ever heard of this floor crashing through 19 floors? It might happen right now. Keep a good thought, though, you know? <laughs> or the chair. Or any, I'm prone to a lot of no, things happening. No, I figure that with you, yeah. I'm in good hands. For instance, I like the way you talk about, for instance, in your personal life, mm -hmm. about this little group of friends you have that you play poker with. Yeah. They sound like old, dear friends, and yeah. that you really have great affection for I do. Other. I do. I don't like them when they're winning, <laughs> but, you know, but I've, but I've known them for years. It's a poker I still poker. have this. Yeah, it's a poker group. We play every week. It's a terrible game. <laughs> we play wonderful games. We play things like um, uh, Spit in the Ocean. Uh, but these are high stakes. Oh, the women's game? We play, play, we play yeah, 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 people like Patty Chayefsky yeah. and uh, Walter Matha. We play things like Spit in the Ocean. But it makes it very exciting because the stakes are high. <laughs> How do you do? I lose all the time. <laughs> but I, I have a terrific spread when it's at my place. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, I, I really I, I spend days doing the spread. You know, lasagna, spaghetti, and, and then you don't worry about losing at cards. And then I charge them 50 bucks a head for the food. So it doesn't matter if I lose <laughs> in the cards, you know, because I've made a little profit on the food. Now, you know, you have been really a big, big star for about six years, but you've been a very good actor for 20 years. Yeah, so least. you're not one of those overnight successes. Overnight? You paid no. your dues, oh, right? Oh, did I ever. All right, yes. but your, did yes. your life change uh, appreciably? No. The only thing that changed, see, if, 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 if I had suddenly gotten successful at the age of 21, I think I would have been cheated because I would have suddenly been a big star or something at 21, and I would never have known what it would have been like to be poor and hungry and all those things that one really should know about to become a good actor. I've been poor and hungry my whole life. I'm poor and hungry right now, and I've been making very good money for the last six years. I think I never see my money. It all goes somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where it is. What do you mean you're poor? I don't know. I have like a business manager and they say he's taking wonderful care of your, your money but I haven't been able to contact my business manager for four years I don't know where he is I think he's on vacation but I think I'm okay financially but nothing really changes I mean your lifestyle yes I got a bigger apartment and um, financially you become more secure of course but I still have the same friends I've always that's had. what I want to sure. the same oh friends. yes wouldn't trade them for anything in the world what do I need new friends for because I've got money you know I mean it's, it's well uh, someone asked I still have the same agent I've had for the last 12 years. Somebody asked Mel Brooks that question, mm -hmm. Jimmy, once. They said, you know, how have you changed since you became rich and successful? And he took a long pause and he says, I'm hairier. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, I do. Yeah. 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 He is hairy. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, but apparently, if you if you're stable about yourself, you can take uh, the successes with uh, the little defeats. Yes. I I'll give you an example. When I when I first started to make some money, uh, my business manager said, "Why don't you move to a bigger apartment?" And I said, "No, because I've got an apartment that's rent controlled. I don't want to move to a different apartment." He said, no, "I really think you can afford to move to a better apartment." I said, "Okay." And I looked at a better apartment on Park Avenue, beautiful neighborhood, and I thought, my God, I'd have to wear a tie to pick up the mail in the morning. I don't want to live like that. Who wants to live in that kind of a building? So I moved to a bigger apartment in the same building that I've always lived in. It's terrific, but you it's just a bigger apartment. Village? Yeah, I live in the village. I've always lived, my whole family lived in the village. What kind of a guy is Colucci? Colucci? Just like me, crazy. No, he's, he heads a department in an unemployment office, and when, when I got this script, and it said the locale is an unemployment office. I said, I am home because I have spent half of my life in the unemployment office. I know the unemployment office. Very good talk. And um, so I said, this, this is terrific. Then when I found out the script was written by Renee Taylor and Joe Bologna, I said, marvelous. These are writers that really know how to write. And uh, we created the character together during the rehearsal period. I, I, I got a lot of it from my own father. I mean, you know, his philosophy and, and mannerisms and... Uh, 
it was a great help to me. And all of the comedy in the show is really based on truth. And I think that's the essence of good comedy. Comedy that you can identify with, um, at least with a person. The creators, uh, Renee Taylor and Joseph Yeah, Bologna, they're marvelous. They have a good track record themselves. Yeah, they won an Emmy this year and, and for the Marlo Thomas show. And they, they did Lovers and Other Strangers and made for each other. And they're sensational. Now, when they're listed in the credits as creators, Jimmy, will their touch be apparent throughout the whole year? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They are there for the entire, well, certainly for the first 13 weeks. I mean, they will be writing most of them, and they will be there at all times to supervise. Somebody asked you what kind of a person you were. Mm -hmm. You are. Yeah. How would you describe it? Very average. <laughs> yeah, it's a very, uh, I used to go through life with people saying, um, you remind me of my brother or my father, and um, you're, you're really the common man, aren't you? Yes, yes, I guess I am. You consider yourself to be a lovable character? I don't know. It depends if you love me or not. If you don't like me, then I'm not so lovable. But uh, I like people. I would, think, I would think that your enemies would be few. I don't have too many enemies. I don't think. I have a lot of friends, though. I get that impression. Yeah, I have a lot of friends. A lot of very loyal friends. A lot of good friends. If you had the chance to do the Quixote picture again, yeah. Sancho Panza, mm -hmm. would you do it differently? Would you take the part? Would you like I, it? I would, I would make, I would have them rewrite it so that Sancho ended up with Sophia Loren. And then I would do it again, yes. No, I was very happy with that picture. And I was very happy with my part. And I think it's a wonderful part. It was part. a classical role, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. But you, you've got it both ways. You, there are three ways, actually. You've done it big on the stage, yeah. in the movies. And now I've got my own series. TV series. Where do you go from here? Down. <laughs> that's the only place. No, no. We're talking from a uh, twenty-second yes. floor, but that's uh, right. But that is true. You, yeah. You, will yeah. you uh, will you sing? I sing. I sang in La Mancha. That's right. That was my own. Did you do any hoofing? I sang on Broadway. Sure, I've done hoofing. They want me to do uh, a musical the next season. We'll find out if I'm available <laughs> not soon. How long? How long would you like to go? Uh, with the series? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Six, seven years, maybe. No, that's not. Bad. And then think about something else. What's the worst? The worst part. The worst thing in show business you ever did? The worst role I ever did? Well, about um, 25 of them. I've used to be, my shows lasted one night usually. I think the worst thing I ever did was a musical version of East of Eden. It was called Here's Where I Belong, and I played the Chinese houseboy, and I was picketed by the Chinese uh, American Union, and it lasted one night anyway, you know? It was terrible, but I've done a lot of terrible shows. Before have I, you had parts that have made you squirm? Mm-hmm. The parts I had to take because no, that hasn't happened in the past six, seven years. Yes, I've had parts. Something that, you just think wasn't for you. Yeah. Yes. Are you ever going to get the girl? I have gotten the girl. Did you see Last of the Red Hot Lovers? I saw you in Such Good Friends. I got I'm the like girl that. in that yes, one. In many well, different she ways. got me. Yes, yes, yes. What are you talking? <laughs> you wore a uh, Oh, a let's foundation. talk about that scene. You wore a foundation girl. That's in right. It. She yes. stripped me yes. in it. That was some day. And you were on the telephone. You were very busy at the I time. I sure was, but I was quite aware of what she was doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Your you... face was a wonderful mirror of yes, expressions. Yes. It was an encyclopedia of expressions. It's the kind of role you pray for. <laughs> mm. I thank you very much. Thank you. And you may run with Colucci as long as you like to. Is thank that a good you. wish? I hope so. Jimmy Coco, the head man of Colucci's department on CBS and Channel 11, and our gracious guest today. We'll be back with more of Omelette in just a minute.